and see what 60 years will do. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, that was uh, taken when I was 18 years old. I went down to Lachlan Air Force Base, joined the Air Force, because I was in the Army National Guard in Worcester, and uh, Iron Art Platoon. When I asked him what the Iron Art Platoon was, he said intelligence reconnaissance which means you go out ahead of the fighting troops to see what's out there and let them know. I said, I'm going to the Air Force. <laughs> so anyways, I get into the Air Force, and uh, this, I was 20 at the time uh, when this was taken, at Mount Fuji, and uh, I get called into the commander's office. And the commander said, I don't know what I'm going to do here, but I got a letter from the Air Police. He screwed up. He said, I've got to do something to you. He said, they want, they want you punished. So what I'm going to do is this. Can you swim? I said, yes. He said, you're going to Numazu Survival School for four months. He said, that will get you out of the, the limelight, so to speak, and hopefully things will get better. So pack your bags and go in the morning. I did, and I ended up down here. This is Numazu area, which is right on the Sagari uh, Canyon area. That's the, the water area and up on top is Numazu. Beautiful city, nice area, and this is way before conservation and everything, so we had bulldozers down there and we plowed the beach up and made a, uh, an encampment. Uh, but before I get to that, these here are the boats that we had, three Navy boats. The one in front is what they call the LCM, Landing Craft Medium. It's got a large uh, gunnel area in there where the uh, people can stay, or I think one or two Jeeps you could uh, put in there and then drop front end down. The ones behind are LCPLs. That's the landing craft personnel. They were used to go out and more or less check on the people that were putting out in their uh, rafts. Uh, this big one, you can see the tower on it, the stanchion area, uh, and what happens there is we bring them up, they're in their harness, we attach the uh, line to them as if they were coming down in a parachute, drag them a little bit in the water, and then they reach up, release the chute, and then take uh, their one-man raft out from their fanny pack, and set that up, and that, that's the way that goes. And there's our swabby. You have to have one swabby because we had three Navy vessels. That's the young guy again who seems to know everything there was to know about things. Not, not a care in the world. And this is the... Uh, training area where we had all of the uh, flight crew in there and the pilots and so on and you can see the large raft behind him all right that's a six-man raft and that will come out in a few minutes here this is another group looking at a few other things and uh, this one here is the LCPLs now what we did with them is we would put them out uh, in the six-man rafts now it was their job to come back to shore without starting a fight amongst themselves. And we used to, <laughs> it happens when you're out there. They're out there for almost 12 to 14 hours trying to get back to shore, because we would take them way out in the middle. And you try and tell them, you're gonna see land, don't jump overboard. You're safe, stay in the raft. So anyways, that's what those were used for, just to more or less check on them. This one here was the last shot, you can see Doc, sitting on the throne there, reading the paper. <laughs> and before, before I tell you exactly what took place here, it was also, once you got out in the, the six-man rafts, I was in a chopper, and we'd go and they were having a problem, I have to jump out of the chopper into the water, and I'm gonna tell you, I never thought I was gonna come up. You hit that water, you go down deep. Well, anyways, I come to the surface, climb on board, get them straightened out, then the chopper would pick me up and take me away. But that, that was one of the interesting things. At this particular point, the Swabi says to us, he says, I see fins, fins. <coughs> so anyways, we look out. Now, we've got some guys out there. In the meantime, he's got the two uh, controls for the engines, two gray marine engines in the boat, and he's walking them over towards where the guys are, and we're throwing the life ring to them to bring them back on board. Anyways, we have one guy out there, and I end up throwing the life ring to him. It goes over his head, and as he looks this way, he sees the pin. Well, that's it. Now he's 
catatonic. He, he can't move his hand, all right? So anyways, you know, again, 20 years old, nothing can hurt you. I dive into the water, come up alongside of his raft, throw the line around him, they pull him on board. What does that leave me? <laughs> so now I'm swimming towards the, the ladder on the side. See where the, the stanchions goes over the top? That's the ladder. I'm climbing towards that, and the sailor is moving the back end of that craft around. Just as I pull up onto the, the ladder, I hear clunk, clunk, clunk. Whatever it was, got hit by the propellers as it went back to the thing. So anyways, that was that story. And then, <laughs> but then the, yes, the resistance is when they asked me to go to the shock training school down in the Philippines where they were testing out the new shock repellents. I said, no. <laughs> so anyways, I, I come back and I get stationed at Otis Air Force Base and nice safe job of checking for any leaks on the cat's eyes on the RC-121, the constellations they had, and things were pretty good, wasn't bad, but then after that, uh, I fell into a nice, cushy job, explosive ordnance disposal. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing led to another, finally, still have all my fingers and toes, so things worked out right, and that's the story. <laughs>